Hello and welcome to NTC Reviews. Today I'm going to be speaking to you about the 10 most asked questions that I get posed about the Helium Network, especially over the last three months. I generally don't like to do these talking head videos. I like to focus on the product or the service that I am actually reviewing. But for a video like this, there really isn't uh, many other ways that I could do it unless I was doing a podcast. So sorry to bore you with the bobblehead, but uh, we'll get through this and hopefully you get some important information that'll help you with your Helium Venture. So let's get started. Question number one, which is the best hotspot to get? Well, my question pretty much from uh, day one or my answer from day one has been the one that you can get the fastest. They all seem to be built to very similar specs that would run on the Helium network. But as far as my own personal experience, I have the original Helium hotspot, which is no longer available for sale. And I also have the rack hotspots or the rack hotspot miners, both version one and version two. And they have worked as promised. I have no issues with them at all. As far as the other ones, I haven't been able to test them yet. They're supposed to be sending them out to me for me to put them through one of my reviews. But as of yet, I have not received anything. So take that for what it's worth. Question number two, which antenna should I use with my Helium hotspot? Great question. And I've spent pretty much the last four months trying to figure that out. And the answer that I can give you is that this is RF, right? It's radio frequency. There is no exact science to it. So we continually need to keep tweaking as the environment changes, as the Helium network evolves. So let me give you a few scenarios. I had first started out with a standard antenna because I had ordered a 10 dBi antenna and it hadn't come in yet. My hotspot actually beat the antenna uh, as far as delivery. So I went ahead and set it up exactly the way that the app says to set it up and got some performance, very little performance. Uh, wasn't witnessing any other hotspots in the area and there weren't really too many hotspots in my area to begin with or let's say immediate area a few days later the 10 dbi antenna that i ordered came in i ended up hooking that up and the performance changed dramatically i was able to witness other hotspots that were miles and miles away where before i pretty much wasn't doing anything besides the standard challenges that were being posed over the internet so that was a pretty good move so now what happened? Now I had ordered a second hotspot, the actual rack version one, and that was coming in. And I went ahead and ordered another 10 dBi antenna because I figured, hey, this is gonna be great. First one's working pretty awesome. Hook up two of them, one, two. Gonna get that many more rewards, right? Eh, I was completely wrong on that one. I ended up setting up the 10 dBi antenna on my second location with a 10 dBi on the first location. And guess what? Every time this one would send up a beacon, this one missed it. And now this one would send up a beacon and this one missed it. Meanwhile, they were only about uh, 0.7 miles apart or 1.2 kilometers. And I was just like, what's going on? I just spent all this extra money, whatever. And then once again, just doing some thinking and I'm saying, all right, well, this one's throwing way too strong of a beam out. And so is this one. That's why I was able to make these contacts or uh, witness these other hotspots that were so far away. But once again, when that happens, it's great that I'm making those and reaching those far hotspots but the rewards are minimal compared to the ones that would be closer to my location because those also have strong antennas. They're in much more populated area. And when they're sending out that beam, if I get a little piece of it, as far as the beacon, I'm gonna get a partial reward. So now instead of making maybe a full HNT for a miner that would be close to me, I'd be making 0 0.10, 0 0.07, 0 0.15. Hey, still better than nothing, but here I am not being able to talk to my own second hotspot, so I had to tweak the antennas again. And once again, I can tell you that I went from a 5 dBi to putting it stock to using a mag mounts, all of this other stuff. And then once I figured that out for these two to talk to each other, I added a third hotspot. And guess what happened? Everything had to completely change again. Now, I might make a video on this because there's a lot of detail to go into this. Uh, but most of it is just going to be experimenting because what I went through might be completely different for you. You might be in a different area, different features, uh, different population, uh, different topography. All of these things are different. So you want my advice to start off with is set it up stock. So pretty much in the app, it's going to walk you through it as you're setting it up. And what's it going to tell you? 
It's going to tell you, make sure that you have good line of sight, so not a bunch of stuff in front of you, so this signal can go out further. And of course, get it as high as you can in your home. Uh, the highest window that you could get with that line of sight. Leave it for a week. I know it's aggravating, and all sorts of stuff is going to happen. You're like, oh, maybe if I did this, and maybe if I did that. Yeah, maybe, but maybe not. All right, so gather that information so that you have real data to compare to and then see what's going on from there and then adjust. If not, you're pretty much gonna waste a lot of time and money and miss out on rewards like I did, which is the most aggravating part of all of this. You finally get those beacons, you finally get them set up and then there's zero witnesses and you're like, what happened? I'm trying to be proactive here with these antennas and instead I'm going the opposite way. All right, and uh, the ham radio hobby, let's say, uh, we're kind of used to that. We call it having uh, antenna farms because you end up getting one antenna and then two antennas and then before you know it, you have a whole farm of antennas depending on your objective. Well, this is very similar. Why is it very similar with HNT? Because you're using RF. All right, so we'll leave that at that because if not, I could probably go on with this question forever because it is one of the main questions uh, or let's say topics is revolved around antennas. And everybody wants a quick answer just like I do, but uh, it's not gonna work. Unless, of course, I lie to you, but that's not going to help you and that's not going to help me. So let's move on. Question number three, my reward scale is lowering and I'm not sure why. Very good question because I pretty much have the same question. My reward scale, like everyone else's, starts at a 1.0. I am a few months into it and my reward scale is at 0.83. The crazy thing about this is that I am sticking to the guidelines that Helium says would be optimal for rewards. So the closest hotspot to me is one of my other hotspots, and it's about 450 meters away. All right, so an extra 100 meters, uh, more than what Helium recommends as the base minimum, which would be three, 350 meters. So I'm good to go on that. From there, the next closest one is my other hotspot, which is 1.2 miles or 1.2 kilometers, 0.7 miles, right? So you're thinking everything's pretty much good to go. And there is one more hotspot in the area that also pretty much fits that same, uh, same section, right? Or, or, or same guideline where it is at least, let's say a mile away from me. But you figure this would be ideal. And now the next closest one from that is maybe five, six, seven miles away. Why is my scale at 0.83 since I'm kind of following all the guidelines and there's nobody else there? Well, the only thing that I could think of is I did pose this question to Helium and the answer that I received didn't make sense to me, but I'm really not that bright when it comes to this stuff. But either way, it just didn't make sense. But the only thing that I could think of is if we were to pan up on the coverage map, um, right by New York City, Newark, Jersey City in New Jersey, all of these areas that are very populated and not only populated with people, but populated with hotspots. And the only thing that I can gather is I am losing out because of them, even though they're not near me. Because why else would my reward scale be at a 0.82 right now when I'm following those specific guidelines? So a lot of things are gonna change when they get populated because I don't even have anyone near me besides my own hotspots and I'm at 0.82. What's gonna happen when these other 300,000 plus hotspots come, uh, come into effect and probably a ton of them coming into my area? It's gonna be interesting. So as far as the answer, I don't have it. I just gave you my educated guess and uh, take it for what it's worth. Question number four, with the rewards having in August, will I make much less rewards? Huh, just like everything else Helium related, it, uh, it depends. When I first started doing this, the tokens or the HNT token was $4.20, 420, great number. Since then, or today it's bouncing around the 18, dollar range, 1820 going up and down. Now I felt that it was pretty, a uh, pretty good deal to mine these coins at 420. Now here we are almost uh, 400% from there. Well, if I were to use that same analogy towards the rewards having in August, well, it really all depends on the, on the, uh, on the price point. If I was happy at 420 and I'm at 18, right? Well, if they were to cut the 18 in half and we just stayed the same right now, right? Which I don't think is going to happen, but let's just say we stay at that 18 and it gets cut in half, I'm at nine. Hey, I'm still pulling more of a double than when I started and I was kind of happy back then. So we have to really think about and, and uh, keep these things in perspective. Of course, everybody wants to get rich and strike a goal and here's our lottery ticket and here we all missed out on all this other great stuff with 
Bitcoin and Ethereum, so now's our chance. Yeah, you know, we want to think that way. It keeps us uh, motivated, it keeps us working uh, the people's network and building it up. But we also need to be realistic here. So keep your expectations within range. Anything that you do with investing, and I'm not trying to give you any kind of financial advice because I would probably be the worst person for that, but this is pretty, pretty standard information. It's crypto, it's trading, it's investing, things fluctuate. All right, so just don't put all your eggs into one basket. Keep things, as long as you could get your return on your investment and hopefully, of course, some more, aim for that. Anything else is just extra gravy, all right? Let's just think of it that way. That way you don't disappoint yourself. You don't disappoint your family by you know, going out there and telling them how you're going to get your Lamborghini within a year or so because uh, you're mining HNT. All right, so hey, it could happen and I hope it happens to all of us. But if we look at the environment and life in general, it doesn't always work out as planned or as anticipated. Question number five. There aren't any hotspots near me. Is it worth me joining the network and buying a hotspot? Good question. Just like I tell a lot of people, well, that's right now. But you have to keep in mind that there are hundreds of thousands of hotspots on back order. So what you see now on that coverage map in your area, it's not going to be the same a month from now, two months from now, three months from now, or whenever you do receive your hotspot. So would I say it's worth it? Absolutely, I would say take the chance. Because the last thing you want to do is not put in that order and for your hotspot. And now this network just keeps growing out of control. And six months from now, you're going to look back and say, you know what, I could have had this hotspot now and now my area is populated and I could have been reaping some of these rewards that I learned about a long time ago or six months ago, but I didn't act. And now you're going to be upset with yourself. So I would say definitely go for it. If you could afford it and it's in your budget, give it a try. Right? You need to buy a lottery ticket if you're going to win the lottery, correct? So, got to be in it to win it. Give it a try as long as it's in your budget and it's something that you could afford to lose. Question number six. Can I have just one wallet with multiple hotspots? And the answer is absolutely. So, when you get your hotspot, you need to pair it or connect it to the app. And that app also contains your Helium wallet. The Helium app also contains the Helium hot wallet. So it's a wallet that's online and stays online. Now, absolutely, you can definitely do that. And that's exactly how I do it. But every so often, uh, let's say every, whatever your thing would be, because you have to pay every time you transfer, right? It costs like 0.35 HNT or something like that. And that fluctuates obviously with the HNT price. So let's say every 50 coins or so, what I like to do for myself is transfer it from that hot wallet that's online and might have some vulnerabilities, just like anything else that's online, and transfer that to my cold wallet. And I'll do that periodically, like I said, whether it's every 25 coins, 50 coins, 100 coins, depends on what you're mining and what works best for you. And if you don't know too much about, let's say, cold wallets and their benefits, I have a video of the Opalo wallet, and I'll link it above here. <laughs> Just go ahead and click on it and it'll explain a lot more about hot wallets and the Opalo actually works with the HNT wallet uh, without all these extra configurations like some of the other ones on the market. So uh, take a look at that. It's working out well for me and hopefully it will for you. Question number seven, where can I buy and sell HNT? Well, currently, as far as uh, places that are trustworthy and I wanted to do the little fake air quotes, but trustworthy, is, uh, let's say, Binance, where uh, if you're a U.S. citizen, you can't use them. Binance.us, which is meant for the U.S. citizens and has a lot less features than Binance, let's say, and a lot less other things. But you can buy and sell H&T on there. And then recently, we've had Crypto.com uh, come on board, where you can go ahead and also uh, buy and sell H&T. And I know that recently Uphold had also added them, but I know you're kind of limited on there, so I'm not too positive on here, but just let's say stick them with those three places. And unfortunately, there are a few states that don't work with any of them, and I think uh, New York State is one of them. Uh, so once again, these things are always changing. Uh, so what I'm saying now in a video could change tomorrow, could change an hour from now. But as far as what I know and what I've used, those are the three that I would uh, bring up to you for you to check out. Question number eight. What happens when the hotspot, when hotspots come online and are placed in my hex zone? Hex zone is just a certain software that's utilized 
uh, to be able to find ideal placement, let's say, for your hotspot. And as I mentioned, you want to, uh, ideally, each hotspot should be about 350 meters away from each other so that they don't kind of intersect each other and compete against each other uh, when they should be working together to mine or, uh, or uh, work more of the HNT rewards. Well, the answer to that is if my neighbor now, and I've been setting this stuff up for a few months and everything's perfect, 350 meters and within two miles and whatever, everything trying to follow it by, uh, by let's say, the uh, helium law, right? Or uh, helium's advice or guidelines. Well, now, if my next door neighbor decides to get theirs in and put it right next to them, right here, for, let's say, 50 feet away from my hotspot, there's really nothing I can do about it. Now, he's not going to do too well because he's going to be cutting into, he's going to be shearing the witnessing. So now let's say one of my hotspots sends up a signal that's a mile away. There's a 50-50 shot, from what I understand, of him getting that witnessing or me getting that hit witnessing, instead of us both witnessing and both making out and both contributing to the network. It's not a cool thing. I don't see a way around it with Helium to begin with. That's why the incentive was, hey, get these things as quick as possible so we could build up this network. But that's something that you're going to have to be aware of. And, uh, you know, you got to take it with a grain of salt and realize that now. If not, you're going to be really pissed off. You're going to be probably hating your neighbors uh, or vice versa. You know, you could be the one that's going to sit there and say, well, I know this thing's jammed up and I just got myself a new hotspot. Of course, I'm going to go plug it in. Who am I to say that you're wrong or you're right, right? But just know that that's what's going to be going on. Don't be fooled. <laughs> because I don't know if there's enough places, at least in my... Uh, little uh, metropolitan area where another 50,000 hotspots are going to go in and they're not going to conflict with the other hotspots that are in that area, okay? The other good thing, though, is from what I see, let's say in New York City, these guys are at a 0.10 uh, reward scale and they're still mining five, ten times more HNT per day than I am. So I guess, uh, you know, a lot of things are going to change with this, with this network, including the HNT price hopefully going up. And then once the network actually gets used and these packets are sent, off, sent out a lot more, we'll also be able to reap some rewards from there. So uh, a lot of this stuff is just a guessing game. And it's funny because I'll read things on Discord or whatever and people are answering like they know it's law and this is exactly what's going to happen. They're full of crap. You know what I mean? They don't know. They know as much as you know. You know, it's a guessing game. We got to see how this evolves. Number nine, how can I guarantee myself mining HNT from day one? No guarantees at all, all right? But if you really want to set yourself up uh, for uh, success, I would say to get two hotspots because that's where you're going to have control. You're going to have control over that. You're not going to have control over your neighbor's placement, their Wi-Fi going down, what antenna they're using, all right? So you can't really base it too much on there or, or, or you can't control it. And the question was, how can I guarantee? Okay, well, like, there is no guarantees. We already went through that. But... If I am control of, in control of my two hotspots, I can still pretty much do what I have to do. If I have to move them, I have to change location, antennas, whatever, I'm in control to make them both witness each other, okay, ideally. So the answer to that would say get at least two hotspots that you know you can place in the same vicinity. And at least when you're sending up those beacons, each hopefully at least a couple times a day, you'll be able to mine those HNT coins or tokens via your two hotspots. With one, if there's nobody else in the area, you're not gonna make anything. If your neighbors have them or whatever, once again, maybe you could talk to them, maybe you can't. Remember my analogy with the antennas? I'm sure people that were basing their witnessing on, witnessing mine were not happy many times when I'm tweaking antennas and, and nothing's happening. You know, it's like the more work I would put in, the less results. I learned a lot. I learned what not to do next time and what to do for my next hotspots but there is that learning curve and that tweaking. And if people were relying on me to say, well, I'm going to make uh, you know, my rewards off of the hotspot over there, then uh, they were out of luck. But try to be in control just like anything else. And finally, question number 10. How can I get my neighbors and friends to let me put a hotspot in their home? Good question. Well, that's really up to you and your art of negotiation and how good of a salesperson you are. Ways that I've addressed it was I've offered to pay for their internet, pay for their monthly internet. I explained to them what's going on. I told them that they could get their own hotspot, right? Don't, don't, don't try to lie or pull the wool over somebody's eyes because if you hope 
that helium's gonna grow the way that we hope it, it's going to grow, then people are gonna find out about that. And the last thing you wanna do is if it's a friend or somebody that was friendly with you or family, and uh, you lied to them or misled them, that's gonna come back to bite you, uh, whether it's friendship, whether it's whatever. And I don't know about you, you know, sometimes money really isn't uh, worth all that. So anyway, that's for your own ethics and morals, and you know, I'm not here to judge anybody. I have my own issues, right? So that's one way. Uh, the other way is a percentage. So you can tell them I have other hots where it's just like, okay, listen, I paid this amount of money, especially those of you that might have paid a whole lot more than what the actual retail was. I would come up with like, we'll say, let's say 50 coins would make me even at today's price, right? Uh, or whatever the name would be, uh, or number would be. So I would tell them, well, listen, uh, the first 50 coins are mine. And then after that, I will give you a 10% cut or a 20% cut. Maybe you could get away with that. Maybe you'll have to give them 20% right from the beginning. Uh, once again, it depends on the person and the uh, your art of negotiation, once again. And of course, you could also offer them a flat fee. You might say, listen, I'll give you $50 a month you know, for a year, or I'll give you $100 a month for the year. Once again, explain to them what your expectations are, you know, as far as rewards or whatever, because you don't want to say, okay, well, listen, I just made $5,000 this month and here's your 100. So make sure that you explain as much as you can, possibly even put it in writing. Because, you know, people are just sometimes just here, blah, 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 blah. And then when they see numbers, ba -ching, right? Then they're paying attention. <laughs> so don't get caught not being prepared. Uh, it doesn't usually bode well for anybody. Be honest. That usually works the best. So that's it for my top 10 questions. There are many more questions that are posed that are very redundant. And uh, if I get enough comments and other questions that are submitted on here, I'll definitely consider making another video uh, to share the information that I've gotten with you. Uh, please keep in mind that I am not a financial expert. I am not working for a Helium network or anything. I'm just like you and got a little bit more information and I have a camera and a microphone and some lights. So I make videos. If you found this information useful, please like, subscribe, comment. That way you'll enable me to keep doing what I'm doing.